one of the largest topics in gravitation is actually your orbits. And so we want to study the orbital model. Consider two masses. Let's call this uh, Ma and let's call this Mb. They may not be the same. Okay, any two masses that come into uh, close contact with each other, of course, will exert gravitational force on each other. So let's just do that. Gravitational force, gravitational force. Okay, now if the conditions are right, they will tend to orbit around each other. And the rule is they will always orbit around their common center of mass, common CG. Right, and this common CG is likely to be, of course, closer to the larger mass. So let's just put it there. Okay, and so the orbital radius of Ma will be as such. Let's call this Ra. And the orbital radius of B will be as such. Let's call this Rb. Okay, and since the gravitational force is the only force that acts on these planets and they are in circular motion, then we can say that the gravitational force Fg must provide the centripetal force Fc. Okay, and so they will orbit around this way. Okay, they'll go rotate around each other or rather rotate around the common center of mass. Now, what is interesting about this, okay, is that if I work out this Fg equals to Fc a little bit more, we'll have G M A M B over R A plus R B squared. And this must equal to the centripetal forces exerted by, uh, or this must equal to the centripetal force on M A and M B. And so this will be M A R A omega squared. And this also equals to M B R B omega squared, and that's your orbital model. Now, because they rotate around the same center of mass, okay, they have to complete one uh, full circle at the same time, and so they have the same angular velocities. Remember that this is the same for both masses, and so they can cancel away, and one interesting result from these two, of course, is that their masses are inversely proportional to their orbital radar, and so big guys will have small orbital radii and small guys will have uh, large orbital radii. And so, in a more common model, we may have one very large mass and a very small mass orbiting each other, Mb. Okay, like in the sun and the moon, or sorry, the earth and the moon, the sun and the earth, earth and a satellite, one mass that's much larger than the other. And so when that happens, what happens is that your center of mass goes very close to the CG of the larger mass. Okay, so I have a very large MA, and that means your RA becomes very, 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 very small. And so you can assume that the large mass is stationary. In other words, you have just one mass, the small one, orbiting the larger mass. And this makes our life a little bit easier to study because now, if I do FG provides FC, there is a gravitational force here. So I can say that Fg equals to Fc again, but now G, big M big and small m over R squared, R is now this what we call the orbital radius of the small mass, can just be mv squared over R or mr omega squared. And in this case, the Rs can cancel away. So for example, I could cancel this and I could cancel this. Okay, and say that the orbital speed, I can cancel the small m's as well, is simply the square root of gm over r. And that is a very nice result to have. Okay, and so this is the difference between uh, a binary model where both the masses are significant, in which case the r's are unique. Okay, but when one mass is much larger than the other, Okay, everything is simplified because there is only one orbital radius involved. And so this is how we model orbits.